Hi, it's Sandy Parker and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today we're going to make a Dollar Tree packaging for a Father's Day gift. Last minute of course, I hope you'll stay tuned. So you can buy these for a dollar obviously at the Dollar Tree and I think they smell good and I thought I would give a little gift to my postman and my UPS man, just something small. And so I'm going to make a little box for these. And so what we're going to do is I've already cut my papers and I'll give you the dimensions. You're going to need a top and a bottom for your box. And the top, I wrote on the back of mine, top and bottom, so I don't get confused when I'm doing my cutting or my scoring. On the top, you're going to need a piece of paper that's seven and a half inches tall and four and seven eighths inch wide and I'll go into scoring in a minute. And then for your bottom, you're gonna need a piece at seven and seven eighths inches tall and five and a quarter inches wide. Of course, I always write this information below in the description area, but in case you wanted to see it, um, it's also written right here on this piece of paper that I'm keeping my notes on. So then you're gonna need your scoreboard and the scoring is a little different on on the top and the bottom so I just want to make sure I tell you that in advance so you don't think that it's confusing later on okay and on my bottom piece which is this one I wrote the B on it you're gonna score at one and a quarter inches on all four sides now when you're scoring if you didn't know this you should score on the reverse side of your paper so that your folds are correct so again one and a quarter on all four sides. Then that's that one. You can see hopefully the score marks. Then on my top, I'm scoring these at one inch on each side. So again, oop, one inch. If you, I have these papers from Michaels, again, one inch, and sometimes they crack. It's another reason it's better to score on the reverse side because the cracking sometimes happens with those paper pads that you get in there. Um, you know, those discount pads, they're normally $20, but you get them 70% off. You know, the ones I'm talking about. Okay, then what you're gonna wanna do is on your score line, and I mean on the divot of the score, you're gonna wanna cut all the way to your score line, your first score line. Then you're gonna wanna cut a little bit diagonally toward the outside to your little, you know, on your little flap. Don't worry, we'll do it three more times, eight, seven more times, so you'll get the hang of it. You're gonna wanna make sure that you cut away that score line. So cut on the outside of it, and then you're gonna wanna cut that little triangle little piece out. It doesn't matter if you cut a little bit larger piece out, you just wanna make sure that you cut that out so that when you, um, when you go to put this together, that diagonal cut makes it so that you don't, you don't have a um, problem making that fold into the center. You'll see when we get there. Ooh, almost cut the wrong way. That would have been a bummer. Now something I should have done, but didn't do, and this isn't a big deal, but if you forget like I did, I should have folded my scores before I did the cuts. And the reason for that is it just makes it easier um, to fold everything before all these cuts are made. I'd be only folding one piece of paper instead of three. Do you follow that? You just want to make sure all those folds are nice and crisp if you can do it. Okay, so instead of just doing all my folds on my other box, I'm going to do, we'll just put this one on the, we'll put this together first. And this is our bottom. So I'm gonna erase that B so it's gone when we put everything together. No one needs to see it. Okay. Then you're gonna put glue on the outside of these two flaps. So we're gonna put, I'm using wet glue. You can use tear tape. You can use any kind of really good glue. You just wanna make sure that you cover that 
piece so that it has got glue on it. Then what I always do when I'm doing these things is I always use clothespins because it makes sure that if you, you know you don't have to hold it. I don't know about all of you, but I've seen other people do this where they hold on to their glued um, piece and they hold it forever. And I think to myself, I'm not going to hold anything like that. So you're going to fold up your sides and you're going to hold it just long enough to get that clip on there. You want to make sure your clip is on nice and securely. And we're going to do the other side exactly the same way. You're going to just put wet glue. And because this paper has this gold foiling on it, oh, I just glued the bottom, um, it might be harder to keep the top glued shut or the sides glued shut because of that foiling. So you just want to be make sure you're extra careful with your gluing. And I'm just going to make sure, ooh, a little issue there. Just making sure that my sides are straight and that my ends are um, glued so that it don't so it doesn't overlap what I'm saying is you don't want your little pieces to stick out these end pieces if you do then your then your box isn't straight so mine looks pretty good then we're gonna do the same thing with this one we're gonna fold it all up And we're going to fold in our sides and then our center piece. The center pieces that are long, these will have a tendency to crack because they're, it's a long fold and um, it just has a tendency to crack when you're using this paper from Michaels. Um, it's thicker and sometimes it just cracks in the edge. This did not crack, which is good, but I'm just saying you might your paper might crack. Then you want to fold down your bottom like that and put your wet glue all along that tab. And because I don't think ahead, I only have four clothespins out, so I'm just going to use the same clothespins and get my edges glued down. And fold in these two pieces. Do some gluing. We're almost done. Now, of course, we want to decorate our box with something. That's always the tricky part for me when it's a man type gift like this one, is figuring out what I want to do to decorate it. I like to move my paper, my clothespins from one end of that tab to the other end to make sure that both ends are well adhered. Because sometimes if you put it in one spot and then you don't move it, you might have one end glued down and the other end not. Okay, back to this. So I had extra paper left over, so what I did was I cut one piece and I just folded it in half and I made my card out of that. And usually you make like a three by three card. This is a little bit smaller than that because my paper I had left over was I think like five and seven eighths maybe. Nope, sorry, five and a quarter. So um, I just made it so that it was close. Okay, so I gotta erase the word top. If you can hear panting, it's not me, it's Bella. She just went for a big walk with Rich and Honey and now she's tired and hanging with me. Okay, so you're gonna take your, bo your bottom. The reason the bottom is the bottom is because of the size difference and it's taller. And it was taller so that when I put the top on, the top only goes down three quarters of the way. Can you see where the top ends? So what I did was I took this Offray ribbon, it's just your inexpensive ribbon that you get at, um, I think I got it at Joann's probably. And then I put two pieces of tear tape on the back right there, see that? And then I'm going to just lay it inside the top. And then I'm going to take the other piece that's also already got the tear tape on it. You want to make sure none of your tear tape hangs over the edges because if it does, 
it'll be sticky and it'll stick it'll make the inside of your box sticky okay then I'm just gonna fold it up like this and I'll put my lid on And because it's a gift for a man, I might end up just making it a knot. And to make it for a, a knot, you do right over left. Hold on, I'll show you this again. You do right over left. And then you pull it tight like that. And then you do left over right. And then this should make a nice square knot. I like to make my uh, ends so that they're fishtail. That's what I think they call it. Okay, to do that, you're going to pinch your ribbon in half like this. And then you're going to take your scissors. And from the out, from the, you're going to cut it like this. You see the angle my scissors are at? You want to cut it like that. And then when you lay it flat, which hold, hopefully I'll be able to do in a second. You see how now they're, hopefully, wait, let me put it over my, put my hand under it. See the, now it looks like a fishtail. We'll do it again on this side, making sure it's pinched in half. And then you want to angle it out like that. And then see the fish tail. And if one end seems to be a lot longer than the other, like in this case, this one seems a lot longer, you can just um, fold it again. You can spend forever, you know, messing with this if you, you know, you think your one side's longer than the other one, and you just keep playing with it and playing with it. That's my problem. I do that a lot. If you want them to lay perfectly flat and you can't get them to, I recommend you get a glue dot and you just put the glue dot right under there. And remember, this is for a man, so you don't want it to look too, too girly. So there, well, I've got to make a little envelope for my card, but there is our little gift for Father's Day for whoever you choose to give it to. Like I said, I'll probably give mine to my postman and thank him for all he's done during Corona. It's been really nice of him to be so kind. He's brought a lot of things to the door and just been really nice to us. So I hope you enjoyed this, that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.